Hi, I'm Marco. I'm a geophysicist in the Geological Survey of Brazil, working the Center for Technological Development there. I'm also a PhD student in the JUSP in the Geophysics Department, under the supervision of Professor Jorge Porsani. Today, I'm going to talk about the induction polarization IP effect in the transient electromagnetic method, the TM method. This is the outline of the presentation. Uh, and I'm going to start with the TM method. The TM method is an inductive electromagnetic method based on Maxwell equations that works injecting an electrical current in, the, in a wire loop just like this and cutting off this current. The cutoff of the current initializes an uh, electromagnetic diffusion process in the subsurface in which the EM fields interact with uh, conductors and resistors in the underground. We measure the decay of the associated magnetic field in time taking time samples in time gates or time channels, and this is why I also call the method uh, time domain electromagnetic method, the TDM method for short. Uh, and studying the decay curve allows us to recover the apparent resistivity function uh, of the substratum, uh, which uh, allows us to make inferences about the lithological and geological process in the underground. Uh, the IP effect uh, in TM data, uh, just an overview, happens uh, uh, in a, when we have a polarizable environment, just like this representation, which is polarized by the diffusion process of the TM method. Also, we are measuring it. We can get steep decay, a blue curve, a steep decay, just like this, different from the straight line as we have seen in the previous slide. Also, we, we keep measuring it. We also may get negative uh, values, negative measurements in the late times of the curve, represented here in red, uh, associated with the discharging process of the environment. It's not very usual to consider the IP effect in TM data yet, even in mineral exploration, especially here in Brazil. However, it's getting more and more important and popular, especially in mineral exploration again, during the last decades uh, to consider it. And we are trying to use it here in our data in Brazil. In our data uh, is in Quadrilateral Ferrifero area, the central part of Minas Gerais state. Here is Belo Horizonte. And we're going to focus in a very important uh, gold mine in the area, Lamego mine, in this structure over here in the area, we're calling it Rosa Grande. The data over Lamego structure here, this is the structure of the mine. Uh, shows us the, these negatives in, in represented in red, negative trends in represented in red in, late, in the late times, also here, that occur over the structure here. And the modeling, the inversion, the inversion recovered this uh, conductor uh, close to these boreholes, and the polarism information recovered uh, this very strong polarism bodies that are associated with this gray lithology over here, which are uh, carbon schist, which is very important for the structural control of the gold mineralization here. In the Hossagrin area, uh, it's also very special in, in interesting case in which we have a very strong magnetic this magnetic data associated with uh, iron formations that occur here, uh, and the polarization information recovered a lot of polarizable bodies uh, along this magnetic uh, structure over here. This magnetic structure, this banded iron formation they are related to the gold mineralization here, which indicate, may indicate that uh, uh, an important potential for gold mineralization here. Uh, so the takeaway messages are that the IP effect is very important to define the resistivity model. Uh, if we do not consider it, uh, it could lead to erroneous interpretations. It's a very promising tool for mineral exploration. So the question is, should we start to use it as a default tool for geological mapping? I think so but with a lot of precautions we do the ambiguities uh, in this data. So these are the references, contact, and thank you.